Welcome to Growth Connection Support, bringing together learners to create community, hosted by Branch Alliance for Educator Diversity. Okay, thanks. My, my name is Kim Igwe, and I'm the Professional Development Associate here at Branch Ed. Thank you for joining us. We're honored to have each of you here today. I know you're eager to hear from our panelists, so we're going to get started quickly after my three minute brief intro. With that, I will briefly share the mission of Branch Ed. It's our vision to strengthen, grow, and lift up the impact of educator preparation programs at minority serving institutions as being central to efforts to shift the 20% of national representation of teachers of color to a much greater percentage of a diverse and highly qualified teaching force. In doing so, we can and will ensure America's children receive the best education and support as possible. Today is the second webinar in our 2022-2023 webinar series. The purpose of this 2022-2023 Nuts and Bolts webinar series is to highlight the application of the Branch Ed's signature framework for the quality preparation of educators, which outlines a roadmap to create teacher preparation programs that meet the needs of our increasingly diverse student body. It seeks to build equity-oriented educator preparation programs that prepare educators to reflect, respect, and refine the value of the diversity of America's PK through 12 school children. The framework identifies six critical principles that teacher preparation providers can leverage to redesign their programs. Two of these principles, community of learners and data empowerment provide the foundation for the remaining principles equitable experiences, inclusive pedagogy, intersectional content, and practice-based approach. Today's webinar is focused on the community of learners principle, which is comprised of individuals who share values and beliefs and actively engage in learning from one another. In this webinar, you will hear from teacher educators at North Carolina a and and their district partners at Guilford County Schools who have coalesced to ensure equitable educational opportunities for both PK through 12 learners and teacher candidates, leading to improved outcomes for all. We are thrilled to hear from North Carolina a and and Guilford County Schools and to learn how they created a partnership and a community of learners between as an example of what that this can look like from an institutional and district level. Before I introduce our panelists, I wanna share a couple of housekeeping reminders. We are recording this webinar and it will be available on our Branch Ed resource portal along with many other, other resources. We're live streaming on LinkedIn, so meet us there. We will use the chat for resources, links, or any tech issues you might have. Um, thank you to our Branch Ed team for your support in that. And we will use the Q&A feature in this webinar to ask any questions of the panelists. We'll have time at the end for a Q&A session. Before handing it over to the panelists, let me briefly introduce them. Joining us from North Carolina Agriculture and Technical State University is Dr. Gerilyn Patterson, who is the chair of the Department of Educator Preparation in the College of Education. Dr. Patterson's research has centered on using service learning as a pedagogical strategy to engage diverse learners and strengthen the learning experiences that support the effective preparation of future teachers. In particular, her research focuses on how the implementation of service learning pedagogy prepares pre-service teachers with opportunities to develop skills in leadership, advocacy, and civic engagement. Dr. Patterson's work utilizes the lens of historically Black colleges and universities as historical models of service learning and reveals how they are currently positioned to provide context on the preparation of culturally responsive pre-service teachers. Dr. Kelly Watkins is an assistant professor of reading, coordinator of the Masters of Arts in Teaching Elementary Ed program, and regional director of the North Carolina New Teacher Support Program. Her research interests include reading education, curriculum standards, teacher professional development and coaching and equity education. 
She has been the lead principal investigator in several grant projects, including practice-based teacher educa education through Branchette. She's presented at state and national conferences, including the Literacy Research Association, American Educational Research Association, American Association of Colleges for Teacher Education, International Literacy Association, and North Carolina Reading Association. Dr. Nicole Dobbins is an associate professor at North Carolina a and Her scholarship is focused on providing teachers with effective academic, behavioral, social, and cultural relevant strategies for diverse learners with an emphasis on differentiation through the application of universal design for learning. Her professional experience includes working as a special education teacher, project facilitator, adjunct professor, and university faculty member. As an engaged scholar, Dr. Dobbins has involved herself in several multifaceted activities designed to increase her abilities to think, communicate, and learn. As an engaged researcher, Dr. Dobbins is committed to the discovery and implementation of effective academic, behavioral, social, and cultural strategies for all learners, specifically students with disabilities and learners from diverse groups. Joining us from Guilford County Schools is Dr. Tiffany Perkins. Interim Assistant Superintendent for Teaching, Learning, and Professional Development. Since 2017, Dr. Perkins has served in various district leadership roles for Galeford County Schools. Dr. Perkins began her experience as a professional educator in Wake County Public Schools in North Carolina in 1995. She also served as a teacher, assistant principal, principal, and district administrator in Rockingham County Schools from 1998 to 2015. During her time in Rockingham, Rockingham County Schools, she served as the 20, 2006 Principal of the Year. Under her collaborative and instructional leadership, South End Elementary School received the 2010 recognition as a Title I school for closing the achievement gap. Prior to, prior to joining Guilford County Schools, Dr. Perkins served as the Director for K-12 through Standards Curriculum Instruction at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. We are so excited to have all of you here today. Um, and we are gonna start this discussion um, with a question just about the beginning of your partnership. Um, and so um, Dr. Patterson, if you don't mind starting us off with describing the state of your engagement with district partners, arts and science faculty and or other groups at the beginning of your journey. Thank you for that question, Kim, and I'm very happy to be here this afternoon to talk about the transformation work that we did at North Carolina a and State University. At the beginning of our experience, I, I think it's probably like most educator prep programs. It was a typical siloed experience where we would work with our district partners and ask for placements and the students would go out into those schools with College of Arts and Sciences and our other unit partnerships uh, within the university, it was basically, um, we have a question, a content question, and that was pretty much the end of the discussion. I think what we realized is that basically our students weren't really benefiting from an experience like that, and our schools were not benefiting. Um, from from that sort of paradigm. And so we needed to really look at what our program outcomes were, like, who are we? You know, what is it that we want? Um, and how can we craft experiences that will get them there? You know, in, in truth, the other units and uh, other entities weren't really involved. Um, they were kind of like toppings on a pizza, but we did all of the work. Um, and so I think as we participated in the branch ed transformation journey, like we decided to use the educator prep program as a model, right, to get us started in the process of really digging deep into the outcomes that we wanted for our candidates and really crafting experiences that would allow us to get those student learning outcomes that we were looking for. In particular, you know, with our district partners like Tiffany at Guilford County Schools, it was about taking that partnership that was more than just, can we have some placements to shared responsibility, right? Professional collaboration where we see each other as all responsible for the preparation of the candidates in the program, 
Um, it was talking to the folks over in the College of Arts and Sciences and doing more than just asking a question or two about content, but inviting them into our work sessions where we, um, I have a phrase in, in the department where I say we have to do curriculum work, where we get to do curriculum work together collaboratively. Right, it is a privilege to do this work and to um, reconsider how we are preparing teachers in a way that is collaborative and inclusive and we, where we all take ownership over the outcomes of our students. What we found is it made for a better quality experience for our students, right, also for our district partners and that our units across campus also understood the mission and vision of preparing more teachers for the pipeline and were able to buy in into our collective work. And, you know, we have the teamwork makes the dream work. That's our slogan in the department. But what we really found is that we were able to um, actualize that. And through the connection between the district and our unit partners um, and really deepening our partnerships by listening to each other. I think that's one of the things we do best um, within our partnership is that we listen to each other well and we've established the relationship so that there is trust to be able to really identify those areas of challenge without judgment, right? To acknowledge these are areas that we want to improve upon, that we want to strengthen. And so how do we use our collective gifts and talents uh, to get that particular outcome. So to sum up, because I can talk about this all day, Kim, um, it, it was disconnected, right? There was really a, a gap in the relationships and the branch had provided us with a framework and the space and time and the tools to facilitate us really ha having a true partnership where everyone benefits. Um, and understanding that as we work together, we've seen processes become more streamlined. But in truth, we've just seen the quality of the preparation of the teachers that we put out at North Carolina a t State University really increase, right? Which is a benefit for all of our partners. And so that's kind of where we started. And I kind of talked about where we ended up as well. Um, but I, I think it's like most ed prep programs, right? We're working with the units, but could we deepen that integration? Could we deepen that partnership? We were able to with the support and guidance from Branch Ed. Thank you for starting us off, Dr. Patterson, um, and sharing that beginning part of the relationship and how it built over time. Dr. Perkins would love um, to hear how Guilford County built a community of learners within your mentor teachers. Thank you. Yes. So um, I think one of the critical, well, let me back up a minute. Some things I was thinking about um, as Dr. Patterson was sharing the beginning is that um, it was really important, I think, for both organizations to go through a period of learning about the governance and structure. And I am going to get around to the answer to your question because this, this, this is related. Um, and decision making in each organization, right? So um, when we would get the list, we, meaning my human resources colleagues, because my primary role is in teaching and learning um, and professional development, and I have colleagues who were also were a part of this journey, this transformation journey in human resources. So it really um, gave us pause to look internally and say, what are our processes for placing these teachers, right? And how does that need to be different based on this being a practice-based uh, teacher education um, approach to preparing um, teacher candidates. So we did do some internal um, assessment and analysis and critique of how that was happening um, and made sure that we were supporting um, the principals and the mentor teachers around um, ensuring that they understood what was expected of them, right? And of course, collaborating with um, our university partner um, to do that as part of that process. I think another um, strategy that um, ANT used or uses is to have the courses on site at the school location, right? So there's a real connection between the student, um, the university um, faculty and staff, and the district partners in uh, what this what what they will experience 
um, when they are getting their practicum experiences as well. So I think um, a benefit to our organization internally was giving a critical eye to some of our internal practices already and how we can improve those. And in turn, the deeper collaboration as Dr. Patterson described um, between the two organizations and really being intentional around common mutual benefits and vision for this work. Um, and then um, a very appreciative of Branch Ed's involvement and support around the, the structures and time to dig in, to assess, um, to identify areas of improvement, not only in our individual organizations, but as a collective. Um, so I think all of that lent to additional supports for our mentor teachers and training. Um, I think about uh, one of the conversations that we had, collaborative conversations, we had many, but when COVID hit all of a sudden, like it was like, we all know it was overnight. It wasn't um, two or three days later that we were all on a collaborative call to say, well, what does this mean for our teacher candidates? How can we make sure that their experience um, continue that they continue to grow and we're experiencing this very unique situation. Um, so it was all hands on deck, thought partners, brainstorming um, through through all the challenges. So I think having set up that collaborative structure through the beginning of the transformation journey really supported us in moving through something as challenging as the pandemic to continue to support both our mentor teachers and our teacher candidates. And that leads me to Dr. Dobbins. Would love to hear more about the teacher candidates and how you build a community of learners within your teacher candidates. So um, I'm going to follow Dr. Perkin and go back to what's already been stated. Because we were intentional with that strategy and with that purpose, as Dr. Patterson mentioned, in terms of a common goal and vision, a common goal and vision, then we go into a common structure. Everyone's aware of that structure. Well, now we're going into professional development and just really honing in on the curriculum, what's being taught. But because we've involved the stakeholders in that process, and we see this shared responsibility of trying to put this together, you know, as a collective, our students witness that. So when they began, you know, when we implemented in the schools with the practice-based teaching, um, they saw the evidence of this collaborative work. So when they went into the classroom, when, we, when they were in the schools, um, so let's just say they were not excited to be there eight o'clock in the morning all the times. <laughs> that was a comment, what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, it took a while for them to really understand the benefit, you know, because this was totally new, but it was also new to us, but because everyone was on the same page, we were all uncomfortable together. And because of that, we were all able to grow together. And there was that common theme of, these are the expected expectations. This is what should be taught in the curriculum. But they're hearing it, not just at the university and then seeing something different in the schools. There's a common thread of what effective pedagogy and what content that should be implemented. So because they were seeing all these different models and actually being able to practice in a space where they felt safe, they felt they could receive corrective feedback and the opportunity to practice over and over and over again, if necessary, um, they really benefited. And I think it's funny because, you know, the start of the semester, you would see them kind of, I got to go, my we implement, you know, mostly during our methods um, block of courses. So these were typically um, our juniors. They're moving into getting very enriched and deep into the pedagogy. So this is very new to them. And so now they're on a structured schedule and they're, at, in essence, they all start to feel like they were like, like many teachers because they were learning what it meant to be in that school, learning what it meant to take what they just learned. Dr. I would, one time I have to say this, I walked into um, one of the sessions at one of the schools and Dr. Watkins was beginning the lesson with modeling what they were gonna be presenting that day. They had done their pre-work and they came in, they were discussing it, but then watching their faces when they then went into the classroom and practice, that was just, I mean, I, I, I walked back in because then they go back and now they reflect on what just happened. What worked? What didn't work? What did you observe? 
just to hear the change in the level of expression that came from some of those students who normally would not be as expressive. That I think was really for me is when I told her that day, I just cried. I just walked into my car and I was just, I just cried because I knew everything that we were doing was, it was working and it was beneficial and we were seeing that. And now when we look at um, the established protocols that are in place to maintain this, um, I don't, this, this engine is not stopping. And Dr. Patterson is not gonna let this stop. She, <laughs> she, is, she is the driving force behind this. Branch Ed is the accelerator pushing us. And I'm, I'm excited, I really am. So I can go on and on and on about that. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Dobbins. Dr. Watkins would love, um, we've started, you've, you've all started telling us about the journey. Um, would love for you to share more on the steps you've taken to establishing that community of learners that's centered on ongoing collaboration and shared responsibility for the preparation of your teacher candidates. So our first step along this journey started with um, coming together as a unit. So our faculty that work with our teachers and saying, what is it that we're doing in our program? What are our courses? How do they align? And so when we started this transformation process, we didn't really know what was going on in other classes, right? That the candidates were taking. And so when students would come to my class to learn lesson planning for reading, for instance, I really didn't know what they had been taught about lesson planning in a previous course, right? So there were disconnects there. And so um, having conversations within our faculty first to identify, well, where were students introduced to certain skills and content? And where are their holes? Because we know that we want candidates to grow. them to graduate with knowing how to provide access to our students um, and how to help them to become advocates for their future students. And so um, those conversations allowed us to look at the curriculum that way. So then another step of that journey was to say, well, what is it that school districts really need? What is it, and not just need in uh, manpower, right? Not just in um, people who could teach kindergarten or people who could teach mathematics, but what is it about teachers, new teachers, do they need in order for candidates to be ready on day one? Like, what are the qualities of these graduates that we need? So when we started having conversations with Guilford County about that, we identified some of the things that first-year teachers need um, when they graduate? What is the content? What is the depth of pedagogy that they have to have? And so um, we work with Guilford County on developing, yes, a recruitment plan because we need teachers, right? We need teachers of color, um, but we also need teachers who are ready on day one. And so in comes practice-based teacher education. And so the next step was, well, how can we implement practice-based teacher education in schools? How can we bridge this um, connection from North Carolina a and and Guilford County Schools? How can we form a bridge so that the North Carolina a and faculty who we call teacher educators are not the only teacher educators in this development of our teachers, right? So we also have teacher educators who are in Guilford County Schools who work with us on this design. And so um, Dr. Um, Dobbins talked about how um, I would model a practice or a faculty member at North Carolina a and would model a practice for our teacher candidates. And the, the one thing that um, Guilford County Schools did for us was not just allow us to use their school, so when the candidates were actually teaching their lessons, the teachers were walking around with the content and pedagogy rubrics, the administrators, the curriculum support staff, they were walking around with um, the same rubrics to make sure that when they provided feedback, 
they were informing the faculty at North Carolina a and right? So they didn't give the feedback just to our students. Yes, they did talk to our students and um, give feedback in that way, but the documentation they were given was to support the faculty members in growth as well. Like, how are we preparing our candidates? Um, another thing that was set up was, um, Dr. Perkins helped us set this up, but we set up where um, faculty at North Carolina a t were trained on the teacher evaluation instrument that's used in Guilford County Schools. We wanted it um, to make sure that as we taught our candidates the content, we also taught them, this is what we look for. These are qualities of strong teachers, right? And so when we evaluate you, um, when you're doing your um, um, work in the field, we're able to give you feedback using the same rubric that you'll get as student teachers and as first year teachers and as you move on so that you'll understand those systems. And so um, this experience and these steps that we've taken has allowed for our teacher candidates to have teacher educators on the university side as well as the partner district side of things. And so um, I think that, that I've talked about the steps that we've taken. Oh, there is another step that we've taken, um, data. And so throughout this process, we have evaluated the data. In particular, we look at our candidate data for um, professional licensure exams, and we do it in a, a, a team's setting. We have a, um, a committee that comes together to review data and to offer feedback and support, and that team is made up of North Carolina a and faculty, as well as principals, teachers, and administrators from Guilford County Schools. And it's to help us say, okay, we're preparing these candidates. This is what data is showing us based upon these assessments that our candidates need. What suggestions do we have for improving our practices in preparing the teachers um, and that, that information is not just coming from the university faculty, like it was in the past, right? But now it's also coming from um, stakeholders in Guilford County Schools. They're able to say, oh, this is how your students are scoring. This is what we're seeing in new teachers. These are some solutions that can be done um, to help the teachers now. And so um, we've I like to say that we've come full circle, but the circle will never close, right? Because we'll always be at a point where we say, what is it that we can do next? And what additional steps can we take to continue um, to move North Carolina a and our students and our partnerships forward? Thank you for sharing, Dr. Watkins, some of those very specific things you have done. I think it's super helpful for our community to hear. Um, Dr. I'm sorry, I said Dr. Perkins, I think, and I meant Dr. Watkins. Um, Dr. Perkins uh, would love to hear from you of some of the bright spots and biggest wins in the journey thus far um, with North Carolina a and knowing that that circle is not ending, uh, but mm -hmm. continues. Um, what lessons have you learned in this journey that you want to share with others? Okay, so bright spots, big wins, and lessons. And I invite my colleagues, my a colleagues to chime in as well. Um, and hearing the story, so just so, so the participants know, um, this journey, gosh, Kelly, it started four years ago. How many yeah. years ago? Yes. And so just hearing, uh, just bringing back all the great memories of the experience during the transformation as we continue um, to, to um, in, enjoy the collaborative um, structures that we put in place during that transformation and continuing to utilize those. Um, I would say one clear memory for me was one of the first convenings in Colorado. And I, other than going through a teacher prep program 30 years ago, plus years ago, um, it's kind of like 
we sometimes say people think they're experts in school because they went to school. So I never claimed to be an expert in teacher preparation just because I went through a prep program, right? Now, in my role, I do have um, the responsibility of supporting new teachers, et cetera. But I feel like learning so much about um, the teacher, the ed prep program at a and and just hearing the passion for aligning the um, teacher candidate experience, not only within the ed prep program through the coursework and the curriculum, but also in alignment to the district's need, like to what the district has co had communicated, what our new teachers, what our beginning teachers absolutely need walking in the door. Like we recognize Guilford has a, a, a huge responsibility um, to support those teachers and grow those teachers, right? Um, but I just think a bright spot really was that um, analysis and that evaluation of what the courses were in the ed prep program and the transformation of that of those courses through the journey. Um, I think that's a really um, bright spot in my opinion. And that's a big win for us, right? Because then as teachers graduate and we, I mean, teacher or candidates graduate and we hire those teachers, we're, we are, um, they're getting a better experience and we're able to, um, to know what, what, what the ed prep program prepared them for and can supplement that when they are hired. So I think that's a couple that could just come to my mind initially and definitely welcome my colleagues to, to share others. So one of the bright spots that I see is true communication, right? Uh -huh. And so um, the connections that I've had with um, administrators and directors and principals and teachers at Guilford County Schools has gotten stronger. And so it's not um, just an email with a name, I guess you could say. Like in our first convening, um, I traveled with Dr. Perkins, right? And then um, during the PBTE process, I had actual conversations with the principal outside of school hours, right? So it, it meaning I could call her and say, this is what's going on outside of school hours and she would respond. And we had that connection and she was okay um, with communication out, outside of those hours. And so, um, general, gen, um, I'm trying to think of the word genuine, right? So genuine relationships were formed and not just to um, get students placed happen. Mm -hmm. And so one of the bright spots are the relationships that were developed because of that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dr. Patterson. Well, I was gonna add, I think one of the bright spots that I saw was just a, a better overall student experience. Yeah. Right. So one of the reasons we have all, are all participating in this work is that we really believe strongly in the preparation of really good, effective teachers. And so our work revolves around making sure that we are preparing really good, effective teachers. And so, you know, with branch aids guidance and our strength and partnerships, what we saw was that students were coming through the program and they were having better experiences. We have something at a &T, the largest HBCU in the nation, and I always say this on any platform that I'm in, the biggest and the baddest, right, out there, is that we want them to have the Aggie experience. And that, that means something. That means that you feel equipped, um, that you feel prepared, and that you feel ready to go out and really impact change. For us in the College of Ed, that means we're using a lens of equity access and advocacy, but also that when you leave us, that you are really ready to start on day one, as Dr. Watkins said. So I think from that perspective, when we think about why we do the work, it is really to prepare future teachers. And I think our students had a better overall experience and continue to do that. Um, I think an additional bright spot is also that across all of our units in terms of our professional collaboration and understanding that preparing teachers is a shared responsibility. I think through our curriculum work sessions, like when I first started, like I was inviting everybody from the College of Arts and Sciences, English, math, science, 
uh, music, history, everybody, come in. We're going to work to get, we get to um, look at our curriculum in detail and think about our student learning outcomes and have dis robust discussions and, you know, make revisions based on our alignment and our standards and our core school immersion and, you know, our practice-based teacher education strategies that we're using. And so I think what happened with that as a bright spot is that we built stronger relationships across units. Um, and we all understand now, I think before it was, oh, that's over in the College of Education. That's their responsibility, as opposed to now with branch ed support in this transformative process. I think not just the units, but the entire university understands that the business of preparing, preparing teachers belongs to all of us and we all benefit when our when we work together collaboratively to really um, move the needle in terms of um, adding more teachers to the pipeline here in North Carolina and across the nation. I would say um, a bright spot for me, well, two. One in terms of getting to sit with my colleagues and really talk about content and talk about pedagogy and the opportunity to see you, we all, we're, we're all doing, you know, we're doing great, great things. We're all preparing great lessons and, and courses and so forth, but with everything going on, we never really have a chance to really sit and share. So when Dr. Watkins mentioned, you know, about I'm teaching it, she's teaching it, we're teaching the same thing, but we're not quite teaching it the same way. Or there's a, there's a, there's an added point that she's making here I'm saying it over here, but there's no continuity to ensure the students are clearing, hearing a clear message. So that opportunity to really hone our message was just fun. We, those meetings were fun, even though they were long, we had some deliberations, but we had protocols to walk us through those deliberations in a very timely and efficient manner. All, all minds are clear, but it was just fun because you got to do what you always wanna do is sit around and prepare instruction. And especially when you knew what the outcome was gonna be, that was fun. I won't tell you how long we spent one day working through course descriptions. I'm looking at their faces, that was, that was a fun day, but we had food. Um, the other thing of that that really excites me now is when I look at the different levels of field experiences that we provide, um, prior to our clinical experience, that long year clinical one and two experience, we have principals that are aware of the different levels of our field experience training. So when you make the connection to a school, there's a principal now, oh, I know what your 410 students need. You know, so he's already making a list of which teachers are gonna go for the clinical ones, meaning your student teachers, prepare for student teachers, and those that are still in that pre-clinical -pre phase. And that I think is just amazing to sit with the principal and design coursework, design assignments, and to get that input that is um, the biggest bright spot for me. Can I have a second bright spot? Okay. <laughs> so another um, bright spot that I see um, that trans that moves students from being a student at North Carolina a and and becoming a teacher in Guilford County Schools is the idea that you are going to be evaluated, right? And evaluations help you grow. You have to be open to feedback with the realization that you won't be um, the highest rated teacher in every category every time you're observed, like, and having that particular understanding. And so the bright spot, spot starts with um, the teachers, uh, our teacher candidates' ability to reflect on their practice. So um, with PBTE, we were able to help candidates better reflect on their practices, to think about um, what feedback they can give one another, like how they could support their peers, and then them being really open to feedback from the teacher educators, both at the university and at um, the district school. And understanding that the feedback that I receive is not evaluative, right? It's feedback to help me grow as a teacher. And if we can have new teachers enter the field with that perspective, understanding that evaluations are to help you grow, right? To find the spots where you can grow the most or um, help, um, help students to grow, the students in your class to grow, 
then um, we've done a good a good thing. And so um, reflection and our candidates' reflections have improved greatly through this transformation. I concur with um, Dr. Watkins. And I also want to say, I feel like another um, benefit of that is then they also understand that feedback is critical for them to give students in order for students to learn. So again, that cycle of learning how to use ref reflection and feedback to grow and in turn using that as a practice in their classroom. Thank you for bringing it back to our PK through 12 learners, which is the center of everything we do. Um, thank you all for sharing your bright spots and your experiences through this journey. Um, viewers, if you have questions for our panelists, please use the Q&A um, section of the webinar to put in those questions. We would love to be able to share um, any responses and thoughts there. So I'll give you a moment to do that as I'm doing that panelists. You went through your Transformation Center journey through COVID. Um, and during COVID, um, it allowed all of us to clearly see the inequities that have existed in education throughout time. Um, in thinking about your journey and in seeing those inequities um, play out um, throughout COVID, what changes to teacher preparation are essential to improve equity and access in education? I'm going to hand that to the group for whoever feels moved to speak to it. I'll go uh, first. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Paris. I was. No, you started, so you get to, you. You can go ahead, and then I'll I'll say a few words. Go ahead. Um. I think it's the continuing to be flexible and to be to be very open to the possibilities that we may have yet ignored or kind of not stepped out, you know, not stepped into that space because it's unfamiliar. Um, that was a tough that was a tough experience for all of us. But um, and this may this may not be the correct answer or the appropriate answer. But because we had already been vulnerable with each other, we had already been in a space and identified the gaps and the holes. And there was an understanding of the unique needs on both sides of the table. We had established that collegiality, that collaborative relationship. So it was easy to come to the table as Dr. Perkins mentioned earlier and say, this is what's needed. This is what we need. Here are the structures in place and how we can support each other. What do you have? What do you have? And now we can also, in other words, the legwork was already done. So going forward, it's really about continuing that process of identifying additional barriers and gaps that may present themselves and continually working together to identify resources that are going to effectively respond to the needs and not just kind of grabbing something because it's the latest bells and whistles. It's nice but grab the being very intentional. That's a word, that's one of our words in the department, very intentional and strategic about what we use and how it fits in and aligns with what we, the model that we have established based on the needs of um, K-12 students and um, the university and the district. Uh, I, I affirm those comments. I, I think one of the lessons that I think we learned from the pandemic is the need to address mindset in the preparation of our free service teachers. Um, and what I mean by that is this, um, we do a lot of work in terms of making sure they have the pedagogical strategies, that they have content knowledge, that they understand how to integrate technology seamlessly within their lessons, like they have professionalism down, they know how to dress. Um, but this idea of having all those skills and then working in a school where um, the power is out or the technology is not working or you have to switch paradigms and platforms immediately and how that impacts us as people and our mental state, right? While we are dealing with uh, unforeseen circumstances. And I think one of the 
you know, strategies that we started to use now in the Ed Prep program is, you know, we have a lot of sayings and mantras that we kind of integrate as part of our culture of, you know, you can do hard things um, by Brene Brown and I can handle whatever comes my way um, or I don't have it yet. Like, I don't, I don't understand how to do that lesson yet, as opposed to I'm never going to learn it right. So we have started kind of integrated, integrating some mindset strategies. You heard me say I get to instead of I have to right within through faculty and students as well so that they understand that they can handle and manage things as they come. So it goes back to what Dr. Dobbins was saying about flexibility for a lot of, you know, really traditional undergraduate students. You know, they're, they the adversity has looked different for them, right? And so when you have an image of, I'm going to go in the classroom, I'm going to decorate my bulletin boards, and I'm going to have my literacy circles, and like you have this vision of how it's going to be, and the world comes at you, whether it's a pandemic or whether there are social issues that you're watching all day on television and your students are watching them. We have to also equip our students with you know, skills in terms of mindset so that they can be teachers, but also whole and happy human beings while they are managing all of these uh, unexpected events that seem to just happen, like they are not stopping um, as we navigate the profession. So I, I just wanted to add that in terms of as we kind of dealt with COVID, that's been one of the um, outcomes that we see a need for in terms of making sure that not just faculty, but also preparing our pre-service teachers with, you know, the appropriate mindset to be able to handle these challenges. And I concur with all that as well. And I think about it from um, a perspective of pre-service teachers um, understanding or knowing, right, that there are structures, uh, social structures that create um, in, in, inequities, and they are going to make policies in their classes, policies and procedures in their classes, that they have to take those into consideration, not to lower expectations, but to mitigate for those inequities and ensure that students have the resources. If they're expecting, um, you know, um, students to not perform at a certain level, but do certain things, they need to ensure that all students have access to um, this is just oversimplified, but have access to the materials that they need to be successful. Um, so I think definitely understanding and learning about those inequities um, prior to um, in-service experience can help them critically create or create with a critical lens practices and policies in their classroom and advocate for policies and procedures at the school level, district level, state level, so that at some point in time, hopefully, um, those systems are deconstructed and reconstructed in a way that eliminates, or at least reduces, hopefully eliminates those inequities. Panelists, thank you so much. I know I will be coming back to this webinar to remind myself of those mindsets of I get to, I don't have to, um, and all the, the nuggets that you shared of the collaboration and the ongoing community of learners you've created with each other. Viewers, if you want to rewatch this, as I sure, I'm sure I will be, um, to continue to learn from those nuggets, you can find all of that on our branch ed resource portal. Um, it looks like this. We can share the link in the chat and you can find this webinar. Um, we'll be on there as well as all of our previous webinars. Um, so please feel free to go on there um, and learn more about our resources. Um, in addition, um, we have on our social media, please share anything that you're doing around community of learners in your own community um, and use the hashtag branch ed framework. Um, and we would love to highlight you at the end of this nuts and bolts series um, and share what is happening across um, the, our core community. Next, our next nuts and bolts um, series is on, no, oops, sorry about that. Our next nuts and bolts is on 
November um, 2nd at 12 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It is empowered by data, fostering a culture of inquiry. Um, it will feature our uh, focus on the data empowered principle of our, in our quality framework. You can register using the QR code on the screen or using the link in the chat. And lastly, Lee, we would love to hear about your experience today by taking this brief poll. Um, and thank you so much to our panelists for joining us today and sharing about your experience and your collaboration. I know um, we, will, we have learned a lot from you and continually will continue to learn a lot from you um, as, as we all grow together as a community. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Have a great day.